Good evening and welcome to Tuesday Folk People. My name is Maddie Leadham and tonight we have something that can only be described as spectacular. This evening I'm going to be interviewing an artist who's not only an extremely talented musician, singer and songwriter, but who has also absolutely mastered the art of entertainment, completely fitting his self-described style of full contact folk music. You'll see what I mean throughout the interview, but it's not like anything you've seen before. Born in Texas, this artist has taken the world by storm, uh, touring globally with the likes of Seth Lakeman, Show of Hands, Billy Bragg and Stereophonics. Now based in Somerset, he's a regular at festivals such as Glastonbury, Womad, Green Man and Small World. So let's welcome this remarkable individual to the online studio. Welcome, Rodney Brannigan. Hello, Rodney. How are you? Hi, Maddie. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. I'm very excited to talk to you because obviously you're quite um, you're quite a big artist out there. You've performed at loads of festivals and you've performed with some big acts like Show of Hands, Jack Johnson, Stereophonics, all of them. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Well, been on been on the bill with them anyway. Yeah. It's enough, <laughs> it's yeah. more than most of us can say. Um, so we're going to explore your sound quite a bit during this interview. And um, before we actually go into the details of it, I would quite like to just hear your first song, let our audience know what you're all about, and then we can dive in a bit deeper. So the first one we've got is called One Seed. Um, can you tell the audience what this is about before we hear it? Yeah, so I, I've been living in the UK for quite a long time, and this is a song that I wrote about my hometown in a, in a moment of homesickness. And uh, it kind of describes the, well, it describes the place where I come from. It's a, I come from Amarillo, Texas. It's a very flat place that has very few, very few trees grow there naturally. And uh, that's, that's kind of the, yeah, the, the ecology of it. So all the trees that were planted there during the Great Depression kind of grow in this really crooked way towards the, the prevailing winds or away from the prevailing wind. So that's kind of the, the, the symbolism at the beginning of that. I have to explain that to British people because you guys wouldn't, wouldn't understand what it's like not to have trees. No, can't even think <laughs> of it. You can't dream yeah. it. Excellent. Well, let's hear it then. From the trees don't grow up and down because the wind blows so the seedlings fly away. Looking for a soft place to land, it's fertile ground where a tree might stand, grow tall and join the sway. Plant their roots so far from home. Journey starts off as but all alone. One day a forest will be made Takes one seed and a little rain One seed One seed It hasn't rained for five years now Not a trickle, not a drop comes down I think farming's had its day Save up and send the kids to school Cause city life seems much less cruel But we can spare them from the pain Plant their roots so far from home Journey starts off fast but all alone And one day a forest will be made Takes one seed and a little rain one seed, one seed, one seed, one seed. Where I'm from, trees don't grow up and down because the wind blows so. Seedlings fly away 
Plant their roots so far from home Journey starts off fast but all alone One day a forest will be made Takes one seed and a little rain One seed One seed One seed One seed Absolutely amazing. Thank you, Rodney. Um, oh, thank you. That's very different, isn't it, to a lot of the others that we're going to listen to in the rest of this interview. Um, I feel like with that one, it's a bit slower and there's a lot more of a focus on the lyrics. Like it is, it's all about what you're saying. Um, and is that a style that you usually write your songs in? Uh, it's, I kind of have tried lots of different ways of writing music and, um, that the style that that song's written in was was actually a style that I kind of grew up with because my, my father's a folk singer. He's been a folk singer since well since I was a kid. Um, well, when I was a little kid, he was in, in like rock bands and and country bands as a as a singer or a drummer. But uh, he, so he he writes songs in that in that way, and they're they're just kind of story songs. And um, that one in particular actually fits fits the bill for Texas folk music because it is talking about the farming community and the, and the ranching community around where I come from. And, and that's what most of the, our songs are written about. That's where country music comes from. It's, it's, it's sitting on your front porch and your farm, watching your crops grow and your dog run away. And <laughs> so, it, yeah, it's, 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 it comes from that really, but yeah, it's, it's, it's completely different than anything else that I write, but it's, it's a bit more heartfelt and that it was written in the style that I grew up with. Yeah. Well, your style you describe as full contact folk music. Um, would you say that this fits into that that style? It fits into the folk music part. It's um, <laughs> it doesn't really have any of the the, the flash and bang that I that I'm, I've actually kind of become known for. Um, I think that's what people come to my shows for in general, and when they see my name on a festival bill or or in their local venue, I think they they, they come from the magic tricks and the the guitar juggling and the the, and that stuff, I call that full contact folk music because I still write folk songs, but I, I just add those, that other spectacle to it. And, yeah. um, but yeah, this, this is more of a traditional folk song, really. Yeah. So going, going into more of the full contact folk music, I think our audience might have heard you just say guitar juggling and not realize that literally you juggle guitars. <laughs> it is it's very much about the show, isn't it, for you and your... Yeah, yeah, it is. It's about spectacle, I think. When I first started doing this, um, yeah, decades ago, a couple of decades ago, um, I was like, I think I was 19 years old. I started playing at coffee shops and bars. And um, basically, I, I, I happened upon that, that two guitar thing uh, just by accident, really, somebody just dared me if I could do it. And I started doing that and realizing that that was getting a huge reaction, that I had had the opportunity to grab people's attention immediately with this spectacle. And um, yeah, it just kind of evolved from that, really. But I mean, when I first started out, I was just doing like Bob Dylan covers and, and you know, with a harmonica and a really, really folk. I mean, I really started out as a folk singer. Yeah. And just, just kind of morphed into this uh, guitar nerd, I guess, is the only way to put to put it. Really, it's a, it's I guess, I guess that's the group that I fit in with most. Guitar nerds. I think we've got quite guitar a few nerds. guitar nerds in our audience. So that's that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I think we should go for your second song, which actually shows this two guitar thing that our audience might not know what this all is. Um, no, so they're in for a bit of a a bit of a surprise. When they see yeah. It. So this is schizophrenic duet. What what's this one about? Uh, it's just it's that showy thing. It's um like I when I, when I came up with the 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 track, it was it was purely accident, and um I wasn't sure what to call it, and so somebody said, "Well, it's just like you're a schizophrenic." That's that's a friend of mine said. It's like it, it's like you're a schizophrenic du guitar player. So I said, "Well, man, that's that'd be a great name for it. Let's call it the schizophrenic duet." <laughs>
honestly, it's spectacular, really, isn't it? When you when you watch it, I don't understand how your brain can do that with both of them. I mean, it's tricky enough for people doing that multitasking thing with the patting your head yeah. and rubbing the stomach, but being able to actually musically make a nice sound with two guitars in two yeah. different hands, it's just well, I guess it's a it's it's a it's a well, the thinking of like what's going on in my head is more like um more like what a piano player does so i'm i'm really just doing that kind of thing where i'm dividing the rhythm and the, the melody into two two separate lines but just yeah. doing it across two different instruments but the actual actually what's going on in my head's not 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 too <laughs> i mean it's it's i guess it is i don't know a lot of other people that do it obviously but... <laughs> i don't think it's quite a normal style that you taught that in guitar mm. lessons <laughs> no <laughs> not at all in fact, my guitar teacher, my my classical teacher, when I was younger, the first time he saw me do that, he said I was doing it all wrong. He said <laughs> he, he said he was worried about um, carpal tunnel syndrome mostly. Oh he said it's the it's the it's the hammer on and pull offs that you know ah, repetitive stress injury. So is that how you're injury. making the sound? Because I obviously I get with the I think it's the right hand guitar that you're you're strumming it. Strumming, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. But as a non guitar player, I didn't understand how you could be making a sound with with your left hand. And not actually strumming the string. Yeah, it's a it's 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 delicate technique. There's a there's a few things going on when I do it. Um, the first is the hammer on and pull off, which most guitar players can explain to you how that works. You're, yeah, you're just really hitting the string hard enough to get get it to ring against the the fret. Yeah, and then you're when you're pulling off, you're plucking it. And if it, if if the open note that the when the when the string's ringing out is in the same key, then automatically just by hammering on and pulling off, you have two notes that are in the musical scale you're working with. But then there's another technique that I use where I use, a, they call it vibrato. And all I'm doing is, is wiggling the, the string back and forth against the fret. And it's kind of making it hum like a violin bow. Yeah. That's the only, but yeah, it's, wow. it's, it's, it's quite, um, yeah, it takes, a, it takes a lot of practice to, to learn how to do it, but it also takes a lot of strength. Like I've just realized since we started gigging again, my hands are, are actually hurting halfway through the set because I'm not really yeah in practice at all like i'm out of I'm out of gigging shape so you forget yeah. about so how your, difficult your gigs are. aren't just musical it's also a workout <laughs> so it is yeah it is it killing is. two birds yeah. with one stone brilliant yeah. um, and how did you discover that you could do it what made you start doing it i had a student that i was teaching when i was i think i was 19 i had a um a, a little office that i had in amarillo that i was teaching out of and i had this student that was uh, in his 40, late forties or mid forties, I think, and he used to come and bring a six pack of beer to our lessons because we couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't buy beer at the age of nineteen. So he would, he was my last lesson of the day, and um, I was explaining ambidexterity to him, my ambidexterity um, and the extent of it by drawing for him. I was drawing with both hands at the same time. It's something I, that I used to do kind of as a practice to kind of train your your the connections in between your brain. But so I was drawing a, a portrait and I was drawing a left. I was drawing an eye at the same time I was drawing an ear and he was a bit freaked out by it. And he, he just asked me, he just asked me if I could play two guitars at the same time. And we, we happened to have the guitars tuned to a C chord and he just handed me the guitar and I just started doing it <laughs> and totally, totally freaked out. <laughs> and then took it from there and that became your spectacle. For yeah. The yeah. It, 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 it evolved. It, that, that one moment actually, it kind of evolved to, be my whole entire career so yeah it's one of those it's it's a very vivid moment you know it was a very <laughs> aha moment yeah wow well I think we should go for your third song now which you showcase this again but not only do you play two guitars but you sing at the same time it's just yes. too much multitasking for me to comprehend um so yeah, this is Crash and Burn Crash and Burn yeah what's this one about uh this this is um this is a song that I wrote the lyrics for in my car late at night like during the during well during the touring season when we when we are able to tour I spend quite a lot of late nights driving I I, I go to the gig and sometimes if I'm, I'm not too tired I'll leave the gig and I'll, I'll drive home from you know Birmingham or whatever and it's a couple couple hours drive so I spend a lot of time on the open roads by myself and the, the, the lyrics just kind of came from that and the the they kind of came around that one line there's, there's this one line in there that is talking about listening to the radio and um yeah, I can't even remember how the, you'll, you'll hear. Obviously, the line's going to play soon, but um, yeah, it's just it's just about 
the fact that there's nothing on the radio that I really want to listen to, but the silence is so much worse. And, yeah. and anyway, that's the thing. That's, that has, that's where the song came from. I my grip upon the wheel, my knuckles white I'm racing now, I'm getting home tonight With helmet ties by the headlights flying by I'm do my best thinking in my car tonight So I sip my coffee and I smoke my cigarettes When the radio plays that shit that you soon forget A monotony of chorus bridging birth so tedious man, but the silence is worse. Crash and burn, crash and burn, crash and burn, crash and burn. Girl, so sexy when a motor growls and roars. Pushing past the speed limit, but she's begging me for more. Signs of stop, got better things to do. You hear the rolling out, or is it not rolling you? A crashing bird, crashing bird, a crashing bird, crashing bird. Shifting down, she's revving off, frustration disappear. There's power underneath my foot and therapy in the gears. By the time I get myself back home, I'll need the road again. There's freedom on the highway, man, so good it feels like sin. Crash and burn. Crash and burn. Crash and burn. Crash and burn. I sip my coffee and I smoke my cigarette. When the radio plays that shit that you soon forget, I'm a not knee of chorus bridging girl. So tedious, man, but the silence is worse. I don't understand how in that song you can stand up and play two guitars. I mean, the version that I've seen, you're standing up and it's... it's yeah, just... play, yeah, playing with one strap behind my back as well. That's the... The the funny thing is when I play that song live with the other, other two guitar things, like the, 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 the schizophrenic duet and the flip trick, those, those are big spectacles for people. And they, they, you know, it's obvious what I'm doing. But with that song in particular, because the guitar is strapped to my back and I'm playing it while it's strapped to my back, I think I think a lot of the difficulty is lost on people, but it's actually more difficult to do that than it is to do the two guitars where it's sitting on my, because I'm having to do it blind. I'm having to do everything by ear, and figure out where my fingers are on the fretboard. Yeah. But yeah, it's weird. <laughs> it certainly <laughs> is that. Now you've toured quite a lot throughout the world, really. And how do you find that your spectacle of a show is interpreted in, in all these different places that you visited? that that the part of the spectacle is always take, get taken very well like it doesn't matter if there's a, a linguistic barrier to us at all like like most of the time when i'm playing shows in england or in america or in a, a, a native english speaking country you you actually have the tools of uh, just banter on the stage like i i like to tell jokes i still i tell some of the stupidest dad jokes on stage but i i absolutely enjoy it because those stupid dad, dad jokes almost always get a laugh yeah and so <laughs> You don't really have that with the non-English speaking audience, but so they always really grab onto those things like the spectacle part of it. And um, especially India, India, I don't know if it's because the technique actually has a lot in common with the Indian music, but I, I, I get a lot of reaction from Indian crowds, especially. Um, yeah, it's especially. It, does, it, it shares similarities with Indian music. Is that the, it, yeah. It you... does a bit, but yeah, I can explain it to you. It's a, um, <laughs> Indian, Indian music in particular uses a, a lot of drone instruments. It, um, and most of the instruments actually have what, what, what comes off as a, a drone note. So 
But as an example, I, when I it was in India a few years ago, I played with a guy that played something called, a, I think it was a sari. Um, I can't remember, but it was a it was an instrument with a with a goat skin resonator, and then it had only one string that he could play. There was only one string that was making melodies, but there were there were seven other strings on it, and all those strings, all they did was they 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 vibrated sympathetically with whatever note he was playing at the time. So it it and you you have that like with the the um what's the instrument um the one that Ravi Shankar plays. The sitar that's the instrument I'm oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah so so that that two guitar technique especially with the schizophrenic duet it shares a lot of that that, that droning because that's that's i'm i'm quite limited with what i can actually do with the instruments with one one hand so yeah you know, but wait you don't just bits. it's not just two guitars is it you sometimes venture to other instruments yeah yeah i play the i play the guitar and the mandolin at the same time and i play the um, the, the amount of instruments that I can do at the same time is like very vast, the, the amount of instruments that I will do on a stage for people at the same time, because some, sometimes they look a bit silly, like the, the guitar and the piano actually can be a bit musical playing them at the same time, but the actual amount of concentration that, that it takes for me to be able to do that, I'm completely blocked out to the crowd and it, it, it's, it's not very entertaining. So yeah. I'm always looking for, I'm looking for the combinations that I can do and still make eye contact with the crowd and still have conversation with the crowd and, and still be there present in the room and not completely disappeared into a guitar nerdery. <laughs> yeah. So during COVID, obviously you, you didn't have that opportunity to perform in front of the crowd, which seems to be quite a big part of your music. How did you take that? Did it mean that your music kind of took a bit of a standstill during this whole pandemic? It did. It, 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 um, yeah, for sure it did. And uh, unapologetically really, I, I, I had to pick up another project really to occupy my time. So, um, over the course of the lockdown, I, I made an application for a, basically a research, which came out to a research grant, um, for researching a technique for, for mitigating airborne transmission of viruses, which is very, very topical. <laughs> and pretty, I think pretty much anybody that wrote a, wrote a research grant that had anything to do with that got it at the time of, but um, because of that, I was able to, yeah, do, do some research, come up with some designs. I'm in the, in the process right now of, of filing patents for a something. I can't really talk about it too much, but it's something that, that hopefully will make it safer for us to, to have concerts indoors. Um, and it's, yeah, yeah. All down to, so I spend my days now doing fluid dynamics equations and clay, <laughs> in case you're curious as to what, what that is. It's, um, yeah, yeah it's, a uh, yeah, I, I do that now. I'm, I, I engineer. And they see you like a musical engineer. So you're making music on the stage and then behind the scenes, you're making the venue just safer for everyone. So Hopefully. really you're benefiting our music industry. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. I mean, the idea is that hopefully, like we can we can have have some sort of technology and some sort of protocols in place to where music venues don't have to shut their doors completely if we have another big massive outbreak yeah. or something that's beyond COVID. You know, the next super flu or something like that. But I would like to see is is some sort of science around those gathering places where yeah, basically we can we can say. Because not every venue is going to be able to run at fifteen percent. Financially, economically, it's not not ideal. Yeah. But some some might not even have the the air quality in their places. They might not, their their ventilation might be so old that they don't actually they would say be safer running at twenty percent. Yeah. And so so yeah, I'm just looking for ways to to fix that. Really make it make it safer and well, safeguard the industry yeah. at the end day. Yeah, yeah. I think that yeah, our audience good. will. Well, everyone, everyone who's involved in the music industry and anyone who watches a concert or anything is so grateful for this because our area of, of culture, the musical area, has really suffered in COVID. So has a lot of others, but I feel like we've, we've really taken a hit. And yeah, so, huge hit. And I don't think there's a lot really that's been going on. I mean, this, this is venturing into a whole other thing, but I don't think that a lot of work has been done to support it um in my no. personal opinion so anything like that it's absolutely brilliant and so yeah thank you thank you for doing yeah, you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome um, i needed something to do <laughs> so why not do something that's just going to save us all <laughs> yeah hopefully 
<laughs> we are running out of time, unfortunately. Um, so we're going to come on to your last song. But before we hear that, I just want to say a huge thank you for talking to us. It's been great to sort of see your versatility. You can do the whole lyrical storytelling side of music. You've got the spectacle and then you've got the whole scientific engineering side. There's so yeah. much. So it's been really, really great to talk to you. So thank oh, you. Oh, thanks for having me, Manny. Thank you. No problem. So your last one is A Solar Revolution. Um, and there's a bit of beatboxing in this from what I saw. This is. This is. This is. Yeah. This one is completely different than anything that I've ever, ever recorded. Um, and it, the reason is, is it's kind of inspired by a few tours that I, I ended up on over the last few years. Like um, the lyrics are very pointed to right now. Um, but the the technique. So I, I was on the road with a guy named Tim Snyder for years. He he plays with violin for um, he's not going medicine for the people now. He he likes to loop. So I you know was that night in and night out. I was I, you know exposed to his looping. And then I was on the road with this guy named John Pointer. And he plays guitar a bit like I do, but also plays cello. But he beatboxes at the same time. So I just kind of took those two. Th- do things that those people did and just got rid of the guitar and said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to write a song that I'm not actually playing a musical instrument at all. Like I can't find any more spectacle to make people. So, so, so we're just going to get rid of the guitar completely and make it all in any way. This is what happened. She comes back again. I know that the fools will come to start a revolution to raise a song. We're gonna lose our minds till she comes back again. We seem to be a self-destructing species My drink is empty, that's all I know I'll take a hit and now we go There's still an hour before dawn My dancing legs still going strong The sun is coming, I have faith We save the world for one more day I know that the fools will come to start a revolution To raise a song, we're gonna lose our minds Till she comes back again And the do it again Comes to start a revolution to raise a song. We're gonna lose our minds till she comes back again. I know that the fools will come to start a revolution to raise a song. We're gonna lose our minds till she comes back again. And the do it again. Got a gun on the tip of his tongue and a suit, a hole in your chest just for fun. Well, you never see him come and never see him go. You got him variety in on that troll. Say what he want, man, and then run away. When you ask him to fight, man, it just won't stay. Petty bullet to the nth degree. A pest at best, but it won't bother me, no. I know that the fools will come to start a revolution to raise a song. We're gonna lose our minds till she comes back again. And the do it again. I know that the fools will come to start a revolution to raise a song. We're gonna lose our minds till she comes back again. And the do it again. I know that the fools will come to start a revolution to raise a song. We're gonna lose our minds till she comes back again. And the do it again. I know that the fools will come to start a revolution to raise a song. I know that the fools are coming I know that the fools are coming And I know that the fools will come again
And I know that the fools are coming. And I know that the fools are coming. And I know that the fools will come again. And I know that the fools will come to start a revolution to raise the sun. But I lose our minds till she comes back again. And I know that the fools will come to the start of revolution to raise the sun. But lose our lives till she comes back again. And the do it again. I know that the fools will come to the start of revolution to raise the sun. But lose our lives till she comes back again. And the do it again. I know that the fools will come to start a revolution to raise the sun. We're gonna lose our minds till she comes back again. And the do it again. I know that the fools are coming. I know that the fools are coming. I know that the fools are coming, girl. And the do it again. I know that the fools are coming. I know that the fools are coming. I know that the fools are coming, girl. And the do it again. Thank you very much for watching. To find out more information about our future Tuesday Folk People sessions, please sign up to our mailing list or keep an eye on our social media and website. Our next session will be a week from today at 8pm. See you then.